So it was a great week for the folks at Neon. Um, they picked up not one, but two uh, great docu-films from two of the festivals that just ended. Mm -hmm. um, from Sundance, they picked up um, one of those films where you had to you have to live it in order to believe that it could happen. It's um, it's uh, called Painter and the Thief. And um, going into the Berlin Film Festival, there was uh, the film Gunda, which had a little bit of pre-buzz um, based on the fact that Joaquin Phoenix, who is very politicized and mm -hmm. is a, a fervent believer in animal rights, um, he attached himself as an executive director to this film. And actually, it was uh, well received at uh, the Berlin Film Festival. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Neon is like killing it in terms of doc films. Um, yeah, perhaps we can talk about uh, just like their their small track record in terms of... Well, I mean, I think their track record... I think they're the indie studio of the moment. I mean, they're coming off a huge Oscar night for Parasite. Yeah. Uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is doing extraordinarily well. Um, they're, the, they're the place where filmmakers want to be. I mean, they are, they're really repping them really well. They know how to position the films. And they're taking you know, quote unquote risks with these these kind of documentaries which on paper seem a bit niche. They they may not seem like they have a wide audience, but mm -hmm. as they've proven they can they can find a, a way to get so it. So like there. old stock footage from mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for the Apollo mission yeah. launch and um, an old lady who, who 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 gathers honey. Who would have That's thought right. yeah. who would have thought that uh, those two films might play um, um, well, Apollo, Apollo 11 and, and Honeyland. Yeah. Yeah. And Honeyland got an Oscar uh, nomination. Which is uh, fascinating. So, yeah. uh, Neon, uh, their previous docs, uh, they began in the docu business, if you will, with the movie Risk. Right. Um, and then you have three identical strangers, Amazing Grace, and The Biggest Little Farm. So, they, they, they treat every single doc film as an IP, as um, an IPO, I should say. Um, and they're able to go and gather and find that audience. So I'm really, um, I'm really enthusiastic about what they might do with these two films. Um, so the the film that played in Berlin um, is called uh, uh, Gunda, and that's black and white, yep. without any sound, um, featuring a one-legged chicken and um, and just a couple of farm animals, and they give them um, a little bit of. Uh, a creative space, I guess. Um, that filmmaker did a a quail, uh, a quail or a, yeah, a, yeah, aquarella or whatever. I, yeah, I can't I, pronounce it either. That was a TIFF selection. Yeah. So that filmmaker is actually um, um, a, a buzz docu filmmaker, as right. we speak. In terms of the Sundance film, I happened to catch it uh, very, very late in the film festival. Uh, the painter and the thief is asked the question: What what would you do if you ha if you were able to meet the person who um, took your art away mm -hmm. um, and uh, the film goes in um, relationship territory uh, pivots uh, flips the script um, and it's quite a fascinating um, tale about the human condition right and uh, it just ha so happens that um, they build a, a really distinct rapport um, that uh, is is easily describable but then unimaginable so um, yeah, Benjamin Lee, you're going to want to look out for Benjamin Lee's film and this black and white film with farm animals that, that got the thumbs up from Joaquin Phoenix. So probably film festival, fall yeah. film festival play. So look, watch out, look out for those two. Hey, this is Eric from Indie Sponge. Check us out every Friday.